Thank you. That was so beautiful. And please welcome our next presenter. Excuse me. Susie Wee, Chief Technology Officer of Client Cloud Services of HP's Personal Systems Group. Hi there, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, a way that I really think that we can make the world a better place, all of us collectively together. And we can do it by making local global and by making global local. Now, let me tell you what that means. Um, this is talking about the communication tools that we use every day and that we have at our fingertips. It's amazing what technology has provided. But let me go back 45 years to 1965, when my parents first came from, the US, from South Korea to the United States. It amazes me to think back to that time, to think back to that time when my mom got on the airplane, my mom and dad, they got on the airplane in Seoul. All of their friends and family came to meet them at the airport to see them off and then they got on the airplane to go to a different country that speaks a different language uh, to seek greater opportunity. All their friends and family were there. It was a one-way ticket, and it was a very expensive ticket. And I think about the communication tools they had, and it reminds me that it was really one way. Because the way they had to communicate was to use the telephone. But telephone calls were really expensive, especially international calls. Um, and then my mom told me that to make a phone call back then, you actually had to make a reservation, you know, make an appointment a couple days ahead of when you actually wanted to make that call. And it was really expensive, so that didn't happen very often. So then that takes her to writing messages, handwritten letters, and using airmail. And I actually remember my mom and the son with a cup of coffee writing a letter to her mom. And it's just amazing to think that that was the way that they could communicate. So it was really a one-way ticket. You know, all the new things that she was experiencing, that my parents were experiencing, they couldn't really share them the way that we can share them today. So this takes me to two months ago, when it was my parents' 45th anniversary. Uh, we were in Hawaii on a family vacation. And uh, I don't know if anyone has been to Maui. So we were in Maui, and there's this place called Cheeseburger in Paradise. And we're on the upper floor. There's like open air seating. It was a beautiful night. And there's a band that plays. And I captured this moment. excited because I captured the moment with the camera. Uh, so I captured that moment. Uh, I, you know, I had them play that song for my parents. I actually captured the moment. Uh, and then I could actually take that moment and post it. <laughs> I posted it on YouTube. I posted it on Facebook. I posted it on Twitter with my parents' permission. <laughs> and they loved it. And then all of their friends back home, you know, so when they came to the U.S., they moved to Buffalo, New York. They still live in Batavia, New York. All their friends at home could see it because I posted it. Our relatives back in Korea could see it. My friends back in California could see it and around the world. And so basically, I captured this moment, and I could share that, and everyone could experience it. So if I go back to 1965, my parents were local. When they moved to the US, they turned a little more global, but they couldn't really share things back. So their family back at home was still local. But when I look at today, we were out there. We're being local. We captured the moment and shared it. We made it global. And then people who were in their own spot, who couldn't move, were global, could become global because they could make that experience local to them. So it's just amazing how far we've come with tools that we can use every day. And these are new ways that we have to communicate, and it's amazing. So, okay, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. So many of you have kids, or many of you are friends with children. How many of you see this? 
gets buried away. And who's concerned about that? Okay. Or who sees that? Now, actually, that's what I look like all the time, too. <laughs> okay. Now, people might be worried that our kids are spending too much time on the computer and spending, not spending enough quality time with their friends. But the thing that we have to realize is that while it looks like that, and that's what I always look like, what's actually going on is this. They're talking to each other. They're connecting. They're communicating. They're sharing. It looks different than it did when we were growing up, but they're still doing these things, and they're using the tools that they have that's available to them. And as I showed you, those tools are pretty powerful. And yes, they can get in trouble, but you know, this is really a new way of communicating. If I told my parents before, don't use the telephone, it's bad. Don't write a letter, it's bad, it could get lost. Okay? <laughs> Other people could read it. You know, so we have this new world where the way that people communicate is different. And we have new tools that have incredible powers, and I think that we should encourage people to use it. Now, uh, switching gears again, how many people have worked on projects with people in different geographies? Wow. Is it hard? <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> so there's this thing about now having people in different geographies, working across geographic boundaries. And then it gets even harder when you have people of different cultures that are trying to work together. Um, if I go back to the first time that I worked internationally, I, I'm Asian. You can see that I look like I'm Asian. But I was born in Buffalo, New York. And I grew up in Batavia, New York, a small town in western New York. So uh, I went to Korea once when I was a baby. But then I didn't go to Asia again until I was 30 years old. And I went for work. So I'm kind of Asian, but I'm kind of not. So when it came time for me to collaborate with a team in Japan and teams in Asia, it was as new to me as it was to any of you. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I had to learn. So we had a lot of trouble trying to, you know, understand what our collaborators uh, were doing. You know, I ended up managing a team in Japan. So I go to Japan and I was managing this team and I said, you know, I was very excited to make them part of our broader team. I went there, I gave them a talk, you know, telling them about the vision, telling them about what they could do, how they could be included. And at the end, I said, are there any questions? Silence. No movement. Not a single hand. And what happens? So I think, oh my gosh, I must have bombed that one. Let's see what we have to do. And I visited again, and I visited again. And then finally, they got more comfortable with me. And then I asked about this. I was like, whenever I ask if there's questions, there's no questions. And then I learned, they said, well, you know, you're my boss's boss. <laughs> the reason we don't ask questions is because it's disrespectful. So if I ask you a question, it's like questioning what you said. It means I don't believe you. Or what if I ask you a question and you can't answer it in front of everybody? Then I'm putting you in a bad spot. So finally I understood what that meant. You know, years later I managed a team in China. I went, gave them the talk. Any questions? Not a single movement, <laughs> but I knew what that was about. So I guess the thing that I'm trying to say is that it's really important to learn about different cultures, right? And to learn about what's going on there. When I first went to Japan or when I first went to China, the thing that I do is I don't like to go to the sites and go sightseeing in those famous places. I like to go to the cafe. I like to take the public transportation and ride the trains, see what they have to go through, those two hour commutes each way to get to work. Well, that's why those morning meetings are really hard. So it's important to understand those things. And now it's important to think, what's the role that all of us can play? Well, you know, for all of us, there's things that we can do like post. Post a Facebook update. Tweet, <coughs> right? Just tweet a little message. And then the question is, what should you post and what should you tweet? Um, so I remember when I first started blogging and I first started using Facebook, you know, and then I also first became a director at some point, then some advice that I got was that, you know, maybe I should kind of increase my executive presence, you know, be a little bit more kind of serious and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but then I was on the other hand like, I want to blog. What should I blog about? I'm supposed to blog about myself, you know, or my thoughts and, you know, about things that other people would want to hear. So I had to kind of figure that out. Um, and so then I just kind of went a different tack. I actually do post having my second cup of coffee or, you know, playing hockey tonight. 
or going for a trail run. And I do that every Saturday morning, and I post the same thing every Saturday morning, but some people seem to like it. I actually had this kind of silly post as went into my parking spot. This time I backed in instead of going forward in. I'm going to be able to zoom right up. I posted that, and of course I got no response. I got, no, I got some responses, but I was like, should I post that or shouldn't I? And then my cousin came to visit me, and then when I got home, he got there first, his car was backed in. <laughs> and he said he did that because he knew. So somehow those silly messages are actually touching someone and making them just understand what we're doing. And I say this because we have the tools out there to share and communicate. We have the tools to understand what other people are sharing and communicating. And even those everyday things are things that help you teach someone else about you, to teach someone else about your culture, and just by understanding that more, by using those tools, you can actually help other people understand your culture, and if they start doing that, they will understand yours. Now let me take you to another type of communication tool that has come about, um, one that I had the pleasure of working on, and this is called uh, HP's Halo system. HP and DreamWorks got together to design the system, and what it is is very high quality face-to-face -face conferencing. Um, in this system, you sit on one end, there's rooms in other parts of the world, and there's other people on the other end. And having a conversation is just like having this conversation face to face. Now, HP didn't design the room. Susie, the technologist, didn't design the room. DreamWorks designed the room. Jeffrey Katzenberg, the movie maker, designed the room, which means it actually looks good. <laughs> and so you really get that face to face feel. The lighting is perfect for you. Okay, the you know the sound quality is great. And it just makes you like being there. And when we collaborated on this project, we grew this project. We had a team in Palo Alto. We had a team in Oregon, the business team. We just started growing the team and started working on how can we do this? Can we make this a product or can we not? And as that team grew in Oregon, as they said, hey, yeah, I think we can do it. Then I grew the team in labs. Hey, yeah, let's bring in a networking person. Let's bring in a multimedia person. Let's bring in a security person. We just grew our teams and we kept meeting through this, through the tool that we were using. And what was amazing is that we were able to work on this project together with people in different locations, and we were able to grow our teams, and everyone just felt like they knew each other, and we just kept to pace on what everyone else was doing. And it was because of the tool. Okay. Um, so, and then the first time that people met each other face to face, they didn't even realize it was the first time until speaking for a little bit and says, oh my gosh, this is the first time we met. You're much taller than I thought. Yeah, your nose is a little bigger than I thought. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's just very interesting what we can do with these tools. Now, I have to admit that I'm in a privileged, I have the privilege of working and using this tool because we have it in our company and I work, you know, for a big company and we have resources like this. But the question is, what can we do next, right? So, you know, I'm very fortunate that I've had the chance to work internationally. I've had the chance to meet other people. I've had the chance to learn about other cultures. And many of you have as well. But the question is, how can we spread that further? So the thing that I try to think about is what kind of relationships, what can we do to help other people who don't have the fortune to do the travel that we do? Or the people who don't have the fortune to have the kind of experiences that we have to also participate in this? And I think about, well, what if we take, think about the kinds of relationships that you've had in the past. Think about the kinds of friendships that you've had in the past. Think about your best friend today, and think about your best friend from when you were a kid. Who was your best friend when you were a kid? Okay. Oftentimes, the best friend when you're a kid are the people in your neighborhood. It's the people who you can play with and the people who you can see. But the next stage as we develop these social tools and these communication tools is to try to allow these folks, right, to allow these kids to have best friends in a different country, in a different culture. And if we actually raise this generation of children to have world understanding of other cultures, they won't have to learn it when they turn 30. They can just grow up with it. And by having these people, having these children grow up with the communication tools and having a best friend in another culture, I believe that we can get to better world understanding to make this world a better place. So imagine if we connect, if we have the tools to, like Halo, but to connect a family to a family, and a family room to a family room, so that these kids can play, but play with a kid in another world and in another culture. They will understand more. 
Or imagine that we connect classrooms to classrooms. Okay, imagine that we continue posting, we continue using those social tools, but then we also continue to make it more intimate, bring it face to face, and then have us worry less about uh, you know, who's on the other end, who's out there. So you know, we have a very exciting world ahead, and again, I do think that we can make the world a better place by making local global and making global local. And so I think that I should also mention, and this was not mentioned before, but if you are following on Twitter, um, it's hashtag TEDx, B as in Bay, A as in Area, W as in Women. So TEDx, B-A-W. <laughs>